Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth video to beginner's guide on how to rap. Continuing where we left off last video, we will be placing architectural walls this time. Alright, so now let's go back to the ground floor plan view. Head to architecture tab, here we go, then walls, architectural walls, alright. Now, looking at the properties palette, you will see we're using a generic 200mm basic wall. Now, let's try just placing this wall anywhere. Here we go. Next is, there's actually a shortcut key for wall, which is WA. This one. Okay. Now, usually when you activate an element, let's click again, WA. This green area appears. This is called an options bar. It's a good practice before you start placing wall is to configure this option bar area. Architecture walls are always in height, so there's two choices, depth or height. Let's make it height all the time. This unconnected option is actually the wall's top host or top constraint. Always change this to your to the level above your current level. In this case, we're in ground floor. So what's above ground floor? First floor. So we'll check. Sorry, we'll we will select first floor. As you see, this area here it suddenly became grayed out. If I click and connect it again, there we go. We can input a certain number. The reason that this area becomes editable is when it is unconnected. So since it's not on any constraint or locked to any level, it is up to us to put a height that we desire, height or depth, whatever we want. So just always ensure to use a constraint and none unconnected when you're when you're working on a project in future videos next is using this chain option actually now this is just a personal preference this only allows us to put wall after wall once one was once one is done in example here's a chain example as you see it's non-stop unless you right click cancel or press escape but if it were unticked, once this is done, you have to click it again to make another. That's the difference between the chain option. Next is the location line. It's this one. So let's make one first. If you zoom in, you can see that there's a demolished or broken line in the middle of the wall. At the same time, that's where we're actually dragging the wall at so if i were to put this location line in the face you will see it change now it's being dragged at the corner sorry rather it's being dragged at the edge again let's use a center line see the difference next is the joint status if this in allow, your wall can join automatically with other elements like so. Huh, okay. This one is weird. There we go. Lastly, radius. If this is ticked, Anything related to arcs or circle will automatically make a desired radius for us. Let's click this one, radius. As you see, it's immediately done. But if it's not ticked like so, we have to make the circle ourselves. It's either by typing it, by typing a number, or just drag it like so. Now, it says here 1,200. The reason is, the thickness of our wall is actually 200. So overall, 
it expands into 1,400, which is the radius that we've done earlier. Now, let me explain radius versus diameter. Simply, radius is the distance between the center of the circle to the outer edge of the circle. Next, diameter. It's the length from one edge of the circle to the other end. So, if I were to make a line, this is our diameter, while this is our radius. Now, time to delete every wall and let's start over. Click one, right click, select instance, delete. Also, we don't need this line anymore. Zoom extend. Let's go to this area here. We need to do a dimension line to our column. 500, 500. Is it exactly 500? Yes, it is. So it's 500 by 500. Now, we need to match the thickness of our column with the wall. So let's go back to the wall. Click Edit Type. Now, there's plenty of choices for us here, but let's explain that in the other video. For now, duplicate. And before I forget, always, dupli always use duplicate. Never edit the default family. It's always a good practice. So now, let's rename it to the thickness that we want. We, we need 500, right? Name is just a text. This doesn't really mean anything for now. Press OK. Now we have it. This is the generic one. Sorry, this is the default one. This is the duplicate one we need. We made rather. Next, edit. Let's expand this a bit. See this area here, the material? You remember what we did for our column family back then? It's the same for this wall. We can add some pizzazz to our wall as well. So let's, let's try and use a brick material. Click this button here. And we have plenty of choices. These, these are default materials by Revit. We can actually make our own, but I'll explain that in another video. This one. Okay. And the important part, the thickness. So let's change this to 500. Let's remove this since it's not a structural material. Okay. Now, there's plenty of parameters here, right? I'll explain those in a future video, but mostly are just text data like here that you can type onto whatever you want. Others are pretty much self-explanatory. Now, here's our wall. Cool, right? delete this again and we're gonna be using this one so what we will do is we will just align them to the grid or to the column like so or we can move it using the move command pick here at the corner snap at the corner of the column either you drag this one or right click, drag in. There we go. Now let's complete our model by putting some walls in all the corners. next this area P 
Can you see what happened here? It automatically joined for us. Now, this will be difficult to fix. No matter how much we drag it, it will always become the same. Now, in order to avoid that, remember the join status, we will disallow it. How to do that? Right click here, disallow join. Or another method, no, it's not showing. Here, this is also a symbol for us to click to allow and disallow joining. So let's do a disallow here. Let's attach this one, align. See, it doesn't automatically join anymore. Do the same here, just allow, attach. Now, looks good. Next, let's go to 3D and check it out. There's our column together with the walls. Looks good, right? See how it's a brick wall? That's the material we used. Let's change this to realistic. There we go. Looking pretty cool right now. Let's check the elevation north. Okay, the top of our wall is constrained with the first floor, as we did here in the top constraint. So let me just show you what unconnected does. Let's do unconnected and increases to 8,000. Let's do a dimension. As you see, it's in 8,000. But if I were to constrain it back to first floor, Revit automatically does it for us. Now, that's it for this video. In the description below, I've added a link. Please download this one. This is going to be very important for us in the next couple of videos. And some Revit library for you as well in case you want to experiment around. So that's it. For questions and suggestions, please do comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help me a lot. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys.